Well, if you feel like you can't go anywhere without being watched these days, brace yourself for this. It's a license plate recognition device. Police can slap these things on their cars, capture the license plate of each and every car that passes by, and collect a treasure trove of information on drivers. And they're being used in California and Texas, and now other states are pushing for them. Now, proponents of this say it can come in handy in catching criminals, but privacy advocates say they're saying, wait a minute, what is the government doing with this information, and just how far can this go? To talk about this, news managing editor for Reason 24 7 News, JD Tuchili, joins us now live from Arizona, um, a state where law enforcement is pushing to get a hold of the devices. Welcome to the show there, JD. Um, so, this gadget. Does it make us safer, or is it an invasion of privacy? Well, they're promising to make us safer, I and mean, they always do whenever they uh, put, you know, put this tech on the road or introduce it into our lives. But of course, uh, it can invade our privacy. Anything that tracks us with the promise of stopping crime tracks us, and it could be used for any purposes that they want to put that information to. This particular device uh, tracks our license plates. It knows where we're going, how often we've been there, um, it can set, it can track our patterns of travel. Um, it can track who we travel with. Uh, so yes, can that be used to stop crime? Yeah, theoretically. I mean, the DEA is behind the current uh, push to put these cameras into Utah. So they say they can track uh, drug smugglers, and maybe they can. But they can also track us going to the store, going to political meetings, going to see our you know girlfriends, going to see whoever it might be. And so they're collecting all this information. Some of it seems trivial. Um, what can they possibly do with this information that they have stored? Well, among the uses they put it to in areas that are pretty highly saturated with these cameras, for instance, for instance the Washington, D.C. area, they talk about going to nightclubs and having these cameras out there that can spot license plate belonging to conflicting gangs and get police on the scene to uh, you know, in, you know, mediate between the gangs, and make sure there's not going to be any problem. It sounds like a great use, and actually, you know, they probably can, or at least potentially, can uh, stop violence in this way. But if they know who are gang members, because you already have to attract these people in order to know that you have cars from, from competing gangs there, they also could know that you've got people from rival political groups there. And if they're tracking people by gang affiliation, they can also track them by party affiliation. There really isn't any limit on this. Any of this information that can be used for good purposes to stop violence, to recover stolen property, can also be used to figure out who's going where, who's voting for what, who's supporting uh, who. To what extent is this technology used today? Um, where or what police departments actually use it? About a third of big police departments, um, that's usually qualified as being about 100 uh, police officers and more throughout the U.S. have these. I think the exact figure as of about two years ago was 37 percent. I'm assuming the figure has gone up uh, since then and not down. Um, the D.C. area is heavily saturated by these cameras. Some other urban areas, um, I think uh, the L.A. area, the California Highway Patrol have these. The uh, feds use them along the border in California and Texas. Uh, and they're certainly talking about putting them in on a federal level in Utah and Arizona. But a lot of police departments have these on a more or less ad hoc basis, don't talk about it, don't have policies in place to monitor how the information is used. So it's really kind of hard to know exactly what is being done with this information. And would you say, J.D., that there's a push to, to get them more widespread for more police to get a hold of these things? Oh, absolutely. The, the cops love these things. I mean, uh, anything that promises to make their jobs easier, they love. Uh, putting a camera in place is not putting a police officer in place. They can free up a police officer for something else. These things are automated, too. If a cop sees a license plate, he's got to put the numbers in manually. Uh, these cameras just capture them, scan them automatically, and enter them in a database. So police officers, I mean, I don't, and I'm not surprised that police agencies love these things. Um, so there is definitely a push to put these into place. Now, police officers and proponents of this are going to say, hey, we could use this technology to catch criminals, to catch if a, if a kid goes missing, to try to track down a kidnapper or, um, you know, somebody that could be pose a danger to society. So um, if you look at that argument, could it be a good investment? Well, I mean, in terms of stopping crime, you can make all of our houses out of glass. They can see through them. You probably stop domestic violence dead right there. We'd give up a lot in the process. 
uh, any of these tools uh, that they bring along can be used to stop crime, and there probably are good applications of them. In fact, I'm sure there are good applications. Uh, recovering uh, stolen cars is one of the big things they talk about, and apparently simply driving through some mall parking lots, they found uh, stolen cars and stolen license plates just like that. But there's a trade-off. The, when you scan license plates, you develop patterns of people's travel. You know where they're going, how often they're going there. And that can be used in bad ways, especially if you put watches on certain license plates. Um, somebody you want to know more about, it's pretty easy to develop a pattern of their lives just by following, uh, by following where they're driving. J.D., is there any proof that this technology can actually be prevent, uh, effective in preventing crime? There doesn't seem to be any. Uh, the studies I've seen say that in terms of recovering stolen property, particularly automobiles, there is some indication of effectiveness. But they don't seem to deter auto theft, which is the big thing they've looked at so far. They certainly don't seem to deter drug smuggling. They don't seem to deter crime. At least there's no evidence to that effect yet. That may come down the pike. The fact is these cameras are being put in place without any kind of conclusive evidence that they do anything to deter crime. They don't lower the crime rate, whether it's violent crime or property crime. And it sounds like um, not only is there a lack of evidence, but um, citizens don't know when these things are being implemented in their police force. No, there's no real public discussion of this. I mean, occasionally you'll see a line item of, you know, about them purchasing one of these. But how many people actually know what license plate recognition means if they even bother to look at a budget for a police department? Uh, very few people do. And there certainly is no discussion in most uh, jurisdictions about uh, policies as to how the information is going to be used or where the cameras can be placed. Uh, most departments actually keep the placement of the camera secret. All right. And lastly, for those that are hear this and are outraged over it and are like, hey, I don't want this. I don't want police being able to track my whereabouts at any moment, at any time. Uh, what could a concerned citizen do about this or can they do anything? Well, the, the first thing to push for is the question whether these cameras are actually needed. They're expensive. You're talking about twenty to $25,000 each. Uh, that's the figure I've seen on, on each installation. So if the department wants to spend this, you want to know if it's going to be effective. If simply asking them that question and making them answer it is a good place to start. And then pushing for policies to control the use of the information afterwards. What are you doing with this information? How long are you storing it? Are you ever going to delete it? Because otherwise, they can develop years worth of patterns on simply how you live your life. All right. It seems like at least some regulation is needed or that, you know, people should at least know what the, the power and the technology that are being used on them. Uh, J.D., thank you for coming on the show. That was J.D. Tuchili. He is the news managing editor for Reason 24-7 News.